Greetings everyone and welcome to Intuitive Art Mediums. Thank you for joining me for this little bit of magic pick a card tarot reading. We have three piles to choose from. This is pile one with the green adventuring. This is pile two with the yellow jasper. And this is pile three with the black obsidian. Take your time in choosing your pile. You may be drawn to more than one pile. That's perfectly all right. That's your intuition letting you know that there's a message for you and a little bit of magic in that pile for you. I'll begin with pile one. And there'll be timestamps down below for the other readings. And I'll meet you at your reading. Hello, Pile One. If you were drawn to the green obelisk, welcome to your reading. Let's call in spirit to guide your reading. So first, we're going to look at your three oracle cards and then we'll dive deeper into your reading. So we begin with number 19 and inspiration. Isis, goddess of magic, I ask thee to bring your inspiration to me. So I feel like that you are a creative group. Perhaps some of you have been uh, in a creative dry spot or having a little bit of creative block and this will help you find the inspiration. Next, we have the sun with number 11, a master number. Paint the sun back into your sky. So this is asking you to find that creativity within you, within your experience, something is being clarified something the sun is shining light upon and it's shining it upon you and if you're having difficulty in finding that light know that it's within you and that's why this card is asking you to paint the sun back into your sky and then we have number 20 with grace Grace, blessing, come to me. Come to me to set me free. <clears throat> okay, free of something. Now that's going to be different for each of you. But grace gives us the strength and courage to move out of something or come into something gracefully and with ease. So let's go deeper into this reading with some tarot. We have the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, many of you have been working on many different projects. For some of you, it could be too many projects. But this could also mean that some of those projects that you've set aside, maybe it's time to come back to them, uh, take a look at them, um, what needs to have more work done, what is something that you know, no longer can work for you or serve you. Maybe it's time to start over on something, but this could also be bringing certain projects together, bringing your interests together and finding inspiration. Maybe uh, through reading will inspire you. By re-examining, this person is looking at their work and maybe they're, you're looking for imperfections. 
uh, as you practice, you'll find your own perfection. But this is about moving through the process gracefully. And that means accepting, you know, accepting your growth. You will improve as you practice. Next, we have the full. Okay, for some of you, this is a new beginning. Some of you will be scrapping some of your projects. Some of you will be looking at them in a new way. And maybe some of you will be bringing some of those projects together. Next, we have the Six of Swords. So you are moving away from the choppy waters, which disturbs your inspiration, which can make you feel clumsy, but you're moving to calmer shores. Maybe you need to take a break, do some meditation, go to a retreat, spend some time out in nature, even if it's just going to a park. This is a time to not push yourself don't force yourself into the journey, but maybe get away. This is the fool starting a new journey and maybe just getting a new look, a new perspective on your situation by getting away from it. Next, we have the Ten of Wands. Okay, things have been pretty heavy for you and that could be why it's going to be necessary for you to get away for a little while. And then we have the Eight of Cups walking away from the burdens of the Ten of Wands. And the Six of Swords is in the center. If you want new inspiration, it's time to look for it somewhere else. And maybe going somewhere alone because the fool, he does have the companion of his dog and his dog is his guide. So this could also represent trusting in your spirit guides. If you feel the urge to go somewhere, especially out in nature, we have water and land to get away from the burdens, to walk away and that will help guide you to walk away from that which has been emotionally weighing you down. And here in the grace card, we have three women dancing in a circle. And this makes me think of the muses. It also makes me think of the three of cups, a celebration. And I do feel like that what you're walking away from, because this person is heading towards the mountains. What are your hopes and dreams? Have they changed? Have they shifted? Or do you need to come back to what it was that you want to accomplish, coming back to your purpose? Maybe life has uh, drawn you away from them because other things needed to be taken care of. Let's get some clarifying cards and Spirit just tossed out two cards. We'll look at this one first. The Ten of Cups on the Eight of Pentacles. Follow your bliss. What of all of your projects bring you bliss? And how do they bring you bliss? This is a card of emotional fulfillment. On the Fool, we have the Tower. Getting away from the disasters getting back to your foundations. The fool is traveling very simply. All he has and all he needs is within his bag and he has his trusty spirit guide guiding him and giving him warning when he needs warning, when he's coming too close to the edge. And the tower card is this divine intervention. Yes, it can be devastating, but it's knocking you back to your foundation, 
where things are simplified. Maybe things got so complicated with the Eight of Pentacles. Maybe you had too many projects going on at the same time. Too much unfinished work. What projects do you want to finish? What projects spark inspiration for you? On the Six of Swords, we have the Six of Swords. This is confirmation to get away from the situation. Step back from it for a while. Clear your space. Maybe it's time to, you know, just, you know, trash some of those projects. Yes, you learn something from them, but they, they don't serve any purpose. You're not inspired by them anymore. On the Ten of Wands, we have the Three of Swords. Okay, I feel like here you feel like that other situations, other people have dumped their crap onto you and maybe even blaming you for the burdens that they have and it's not your fault. It's not your problem because we have the tower card here. You're clearing out situations, people, projects that um, aren't meant to be completed. On the Eight of Cups, we have the Ace of Cups. You have your cup and it's overfilling. It's overflowing with inspiration. This is your cup of what inspires you. And with the Eight of Cups, you are walking away towards emotional fulfillment. And at the bottom of the deck, we have the Page of Pentacles. For some of you, this could be going back to school. With the Eight of Pentacles, we do have a book here. You might need to update your knowledge. You may need to uh, get more knowledge, more information uh, in order to complete certain projects. Or maybe you need assistance. But I really feel like that this is something that you're doing on your own. So that you can come back into your energy. As we do have the Six of Swords on the Six of Swords. You're taking a time out. If you're going on vacation, this is an excellent time to go on vacation. Clear out the... Ten of Wands and the Three of Swords, heal from that. And you are because you're walking away from that which no longer serves you and you are receiving the Holy Grail. And this is the cup that brings you healing and grace as well as inspiration. Okay, let's get you a magical spell card. Actually, yeah, let's get you from the practical witch cards. Okay, we have an everyday spells. Self-blessing, how perfect for your reading. Let me see if I can get it into focus for you. There we go. The time you take to restore yourself is precious. Perform a self-blessing every day. Take dried sage and aromatic lavender and tie it up in a mullen sack. Breathe in and the aroma deeply three times, beginning at the top of your head, the crown chakra, pass the pouch down to your feet, gently touching your other sacred chakras, 
throat, solar plexus, stomach, and pelvis. Then holding the bag of herbs over your heart, speak aloud. Gone are the sorrows, illness, and woe. Here wisdom and health begin to flow. My heart is whole, joy fills my soul. Blessed be me. Let me see if I can get this in focus. No, I don't think it's, there we go. That's the best that we can do for the focus. If you want to write the spell down, you can pause it. And I do feel like that with the Six of Swords on the Six of Swords, this is you going out into nature, getting away from the choppy waters into the healing waters because we do have the Holy Grail. You are going to clear a lot of things that have hurt your heart, have burdened you, and it's time to let that go, wash it clean. Uh, we also have this tower moment with the Fool card, where it's giving you an opportunity to start over so that you can follow your bliss. Okay, let's... Let's get a couple cards from the Witching Hour Oracle. A self-blessing can also be simply taking a ritual bath using salt. You can also you uh, put some lavender or other herbs in a um, bag, in a mullen bag, and use that as a tea bag for your bath. Next, we have the witch hunter, danger. Okay, I do feel like that with this three of swords and the 10 of wands, uh, there could be a danger. Beware of the witch hunter. And I feel like, you know, that has to do with that three of swords. People who want to blame you for things that are not your fault. And then we have knowing. Take the first step. And your first step is taking care of yourself. Get away from the danger. And here we have the fool very close to the edge, but his companion dog is guiding him away from that because he's just one step from falling off the edge. And you could experience this tower card. Some of you may already have experienced that. And you're meant to pick yourself up bless yourself, and heal. Do some deep healing. At the bottom of the deck, we have feeding crows with transformation. You are meant to transform your situation into one that feels right for you. Let's get a couple Witchlings cards. It's not what I wanted to do, but this is what spirit wanted. So we have energy. With limitless energy, you'll achieve more than you've ever dreamed possible. But you have to take the first step. Next, we have determination. Determination is the power within to keep you from giving up on your dreams. 
I think that's calling to the sun. Paint the sun back into your sky. And when you do, you'll be aware of that danger. You'll be able to take the first step away from the danger. And then we have confidence. Self-confidence opens you to the energy, the energy right here, required to carry you through each day at your very best. So be determined to be your very best. Now let's get some cards from the Secrets of the Witch. Okay, Spirit toss this one out. You are the source. The witch wants you to know that you are the source of true magic and beauty. Your every step, a ritual. Your every word, a spell. Heed all you do and watch the magic unfold. Yes. The Eight of Cups, walking away from the Three of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles. Claiming your Holy Grail. Claiming your cup. And we have the Ten of Cups over here. The energy of the Ten of Cups and the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, and then your last two cards in making magic okay spirit toss this one out look at this abracadabra with wings fantastic good fortune and lucky chances that is very nice just keep your determination let's get you one more okay oops that is too many So one more spirit. There we go. Tinka five. Manifesting money and income. We have the eight of pentacles. You've been working at it. And you'll be able to fulfill it. By putting the energy towards that which fills you with bliss. Makes you feel good. Uh coming together with people that make you feel good, that are comfortable. This can be family and friends. This can be your cat. But put energy towards that first step, knowing exactly what you need to do because spirit is giving you the bliss. It's clearing your path with the tower and setting you free with the fool for a new beginning. This could be a ritual, going into a retreat to detox, a self-blessing, to release and clear yourself of the Ten of Pentacles, that heavy burden, and walking away uh, and healing any kind of heartache you've been experiencing. And again, you end up with the Holy Grail and avoiding any danger. Okay, Spirit wants you to know that magic is here with you, working with you. You are supported by Spirit. You are inspired. Go with what inspires you. Paint the sun back into your sky. And to me, this is getting in touch with your bliss. Doing the work that brings you joy and that is going to bring you that grace and set you free. Okay, pile one, I'm going to end your reading here. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it did inspire you. And until next time, take care and blessed be my friends. Hello, pile two. If you were drawn to the yellow jasper stone obelisk, Welcome to your reading. Let us ring the bell and summon spirit to your reading to guide this reading. Okay, we begin with your three oracle cards. We have number 45 with the throne. 
Your potential is endless. That's beautiful. I feel like that you are ascending into your power. Then we have number 25 with good cheer. What kind heart and humor free. May good cheer rule, so mode it be. And here you are celebrating with your friends on your throne. Each of you have your own throne. These are the three goddesses, the triple goddesses, and each hold their power, and together they have even more power. Next, we have number 30 with health. Mother Earth, sweet Mother Bright, bring to me your health and might. So, to good cheer and your health. Perhaps some of you have overcome a health situation or maybe you are getting improvements on your health and you are meant to continue that. Your potential is endless. So keep a good attitude, keep your vibration high with good cheer. And when you are feeling happy, you are definitely going to reflect that in your health. And your health will bring you good cheer as well. Because when we feel good, we feel cheerful. And I know sometimes when we're not feeling good, it's difficult to have good cheer. But that's why you have your good friends to be here with you to give you encouragement, optimism, to celebrate the present moment of where you are now, because that's your starting point. We all start where we are right now. So let's go deeper into this reading with the tarot. I almost feel like that uh, a toast to good health, to health and wealth. We start with the lovers. This is about a choice, but it most certainly could be that love is also very supportive of health. You have someone there. Love is seeing you through any difficult situation that you may be uh, dealing with. And if not, if you're feeling the good cheer, continue that. Continue what you're doing. Next, we have the Knight of Wands, an instigator of change. Being at the right place at the right time. Determination. Taking action. Perhaps love is taking action. Next we have the Six of Wands. Victory. Overcoming a situation that may have been challenging for you. Next we have the Six of Pentacles. I do like seeing sixes together because this shows progress. And the Six of Pentacles is receiving the assistance that you need. It can also be karmic reward. And this can also bring you good cheer. And then we have the Five of Swords. Okay, I feel like that many of you have overcome a difficult, challenging situation. But now you're in a position of strength. It could be that... You have, you have moved two steps and you've slid back a step with this Five of Swords. Because the Five of Swords is, it can be a card of competition, but it can also be a card of domination, wanting that promotion at all costs. It could also be, you know what, I'm tired of having to defend my position all the time. I've had my victory. 
I've gotten my rewards. It's time to pass it on to someone else who is uh, better able. Sometimes we just outgrow a position and we want to move on. We want to be free of that. We do have this Knight of Wands, an instigator of change. And it very well could be that, you know, something, you're just ready to give up something that no longer serves you so that you can enjoy your victory. You can enjoy your financial and karmic rewards. The Knight of Swords can also be one who is moving away, moving to a new residence. Perhaps you have fallen in love and the one that you've fallen in love with has received a promotion and you're moving. And though that can be challenging, I feel like that, that the change is bringing goodness. You're going to be moving to a place that is exciting because on the bottom of the deck we have the page of wands a new journey something that's exciting something that's uh stimulating your curiosity let's get some clarifying tarot on these cards let's give them a good shuffle Though I do shuffle these cards in between readings. Okay, the Spirit gave you this card. The Knight of Cups. Look at that on the lovers. Some romance, if you're looking for it. This could also be a renewal of romance. Certainly something that is filling your heart with love and joy with good cheer, and it has a positive impact on your health and well-being. On the Knight of Wands, we have the Eight of Wands. Moving quickly, opportunities, messages, incoming messages, swift movement. Six of Wands, we have the Four of Wands. Okay, you know, I'm seeing more indications of a new home, marriage. We have the Lovers and the Four of Wands here. And this could be something that occurs rather quickly. Uh, again, this could be moving in with someone that you love. On the Six of Pentacles, we have the Five of Cups. Okay, leaving behind the sorrow. Taking a moment to grieve what you're leaving behind. You know, and turning and knowing that you still have something left over. And that is bringing you new rewards, financial rewards. You're leaving behind something that no longer gives you joy. And the Five of Swords, we have the Three of Pentacles. For some of you, this is a new job, a promotion. Uh, perhaps for some of you, relocation for a better job. And that most certainly is going to be of good cheer for you. And I think it's going to improve your health. Perhaps they have a better health plan for your health benefits. The bottom of the deck, we have King of Pentacles. This is going to bring more stability into your life. More happiness. More financial freedom. Okay, let's get you a couple cards from the Witching Hour. And if you have the opportunity to relocate, it could be that the company that you are going to be working for or the company that you are currently working for that is sending you to a new location and they're going to pay for your movement. 
They're going to pay to have you relocated. We have the Witch of the Woods, a retreat. Very nice. I do feel like that a retreat into the woods is going to be very beneficial for your health and well-being. And then we have the hanging bones, seeing the signs. Seeing the signs that, yes, it's time to move on, to move away from this five of swords where there's competition and, you know, maybe... Uh, you know, some backstabbing going on. Somebody wants your position and you're moving away to a much more happier place because the three of pentacles is a card of cooperation, not competition, because you're going to get so much more accomplished when you are working with a cooperative team. Now, for some of you, this could be creating a business in your own home. The bottom of the deck, we have Seasons of the Witch, Honoring Cycles. It is time for a change. We have the Knight of Wands with the Eight of Wands clarifying that this is going to be a really positive change. You actually have options with the Eight of Wands Perhaps you are moving to another place and it could be that your partner has been offered a promotion or you have been offered a promotion and the best way for you to relocate is to send out your resumes to the areas that you're interested or the companies that you're interested in working with. Again, this could also be doing a business out of your home. You could be looking at different living opportunities as well while your partner is busy doing the uh, changeover with the job. Now, it's either you or your partner. Can, these energies can go either way, but there is definitely celebration with this victory. There is some sadness, some grief with the Five of Cups of moving away from some of your loved ones, friends that you love and care about. But that doesn't mean that you have to say goodbye. It doesn't mean that you can't stay in touch. But you're also going to make new friends with the Six of Pentacles. And it could be with these new friends that you create a new business with. And pay attention to the signs. Look for things that make you feel good. Pay attention to numbers. Now, let's get you a spell from the Practical Witch. Okay, we have an everyday spell. I will try to bring it in to focus here. I think that's the best that we can do. Cast out the bad energy. Here is an ancient way of casting out demons and bringing good tidings for your friendships and family. Buy a big bag of dried beans and invite all your friends over. In ancient times, many pagan people believed that beans contained evil spirits. This spell is ideally performed during an eclipse when that which might be, that which is hidden is revealed. You could also do this during the waning moon. Uh, go somewhere high in elevation and give everyone a handful of beans. Start throwing them down one at a time with each toss calling out whatever you want to kiss goodbye. A job, a bad relationship, whatever your personal demons may be. These could be uh, bad habits, uh, negative behavioral patterns that you're aware of and that you're trying to change to improve your health. 
Okay, so after you have discarded all the discord from your life, you and your friends can celebrate the uplifting of your burdens. How beautiful, especially with the health and the good cheer. We have the three of pentacles with the dream team on the five of swords, which I feel like that this casting out bad energy brings new meaning to the five of swords with the three of pentacles on it, casting out the negativity, the negativity that the five of swords brings. And together with your good friends that you're doing this ritual with, it's going to bring you closer together. You now have a bonding of good cheer. Okay, let's get you a couple Witchling cards. Let's give that another good shuffle. Okay, we have manifestation beautiful you are clearing out the discord the negativity so that you can make room for a new manifestation turn desires into reality by activating the power of manifestation and you do that by raising your energies to feeling this good cheer Next, we have Vitality. This is beautiful with the health card. Vitality is the beaming force that gives energy and vigor to life. Okay, for some of you, you may need to go on a retreat. Get out in nature. It's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for your health. It'll be a great place to do this ritual of casting out the bad energy. And look at this on the bottom of the deck. We have relaxation. Stop your world from spinning by partaking in well-deserved moments of relaxation. We have the four of wands on the six of wands. This is the happy harvest home. Victory is yours. We have the Six of Pentacles. Uh, receiving good karma as you are releasing the discord, the sadness. You are reclaiming your happiness and you are going to manifest that which you desire. Okay, let's get you a witch's the Secret of the Witch. Okay, Spirit has flipped this card over. Bridget's Brightness. The Witch has made an offering to Goddess Bridget on your behalf. Let the fresh green energy of Bridget arise within you. Feel yourself and your world bloom and grow. Manifestation. Now, Bridget is also a goddess of inspiration. She is the torch goddess. She is bringing light into your darkness, guiding you to your path, letting you see your path. Okay, let's get you a couple cards from Making Magic to conclude your reading. Spirit, heavenly assistance from your angels and guides. I love it. With the hanging bones and seeing the signs, that is spirit talking to you, guiding you with their assistance. Next, we have Felix Felictitious, power symbol to create lucky, serendipitous events. 
I love it. We have the Eight of Wands. You have been sending out those messages and you've been doing so with love and determination. We have two Knights here, the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Wands. Both are instigators of change, a change of heart, a change of location, being at the right place at the right time, creating those opportunities, letting spirit know what it is that you desire. And again, there is possible relocation for some of you. And that could be what you're manifesting. And look, on the bottom of the deck, we have love charm. Attract a lover, soulmate, or a life partner. We have the lovers with the knight of cups. And I just want to show you this at the bottom of the secret witch. We have free will, wonder, these eight words, the read, fulfill. And ye harm none, do what ye will, be free. The witch encourages you to express your magic your own way. We need only act with love. And I do want to show you this at the bottom of the witch's spell. We have charms for love. Another charm for luck in love is to take seven tiny rose quartz stones and put them on your windowsill during a full moon for seven hours. Then pick up the stones and while holding them in your palm of your hand, speak this wish spell aloud. Luck be quick, luck be kind, and by the lucky seven, good luck will be mine. Blessed be. Wow. Love, luck, manifestation, health, good cheer, casting out the negativity so that you're making room for this manifestation to actually manifest in the 3D for you. Power symbol to create lucky serendipitous events. Your spirit guides and angels are with you, working with you. Let them know that you love and appreciate them. And they will guide you well. I'm going to end your reading here, Pile 2. I hope that you found this inspiring and helpful. May spirit be with you as well as your angels to guide you. And until next time, take care and blessed be my friends. Hello, Pile 3. If you were drawn to the Black Obsidian Obelisk, welcome to your reading. Let's call in spirit for your reading for a little bit of magic. So let's take a look at your three magical oracle cards. Okay, number 40 with psychic protection. Around me now, a shield of gold, protecting me strong and bold. Ooh, and then we have number two, the evil queen. You deserve sugar, not salt. How appropriate to go with the psychic protection. I think you're going to know the difference between the evil queen who is trying to offer you salt instead of something sweet. And then we have number 24 with magical powers. I weave and clear. I cast and know. Magic secrets to me now show. Okay, so I do feel like that many of you that were drawn to this deck may be doing some protection magic because you are protecting yourself psychically. I also feel like that you are growing in your magical powers as well. And it's caught the attention of some evil queen uh, who might be trying to cast doubt on your abilities. You know your abilities. 
I cast and know magic secrets to me now show you know what you're capable of doing and you might actually be capable of doing more than what you are aware of. You are being protected, but it never hurts to let your spirit guides and angels know that you may need some added protection when you encounter this evil queen. Now, the evil queen, of course, can be uh, a situation, whether it's a workplace, colleagues, friends, family, that might be trying to cast doubt or rub salt in your injuries. Now, salt is purifying. It's not sweet. However, salt can bring out the sweetness of food. So I do feel like that um, no matter what this evil queen, whether it's a situation or a person, cast your way, you're going to be able to shift your perception to where you're not letting them bother you at all. And it's just going to reflect back to them. You are protected by your goodness. Okay, let's go deeper into this reading with some tarot. Okay, we begin with the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, the Knights are all instigators of change. The Knight of Pentacles is planting a seed for stability, financial stability, financial growth. Um, I feel like that this is a change in how you invest your time, your energy, your finances. Um, you could be deciding or looking at uh, what you want to invest in. This could also be you investing in a new business. And again, don't let people cast doubt on what it is you wish to do. Next, we have the Eight of Cups. Yes, walk away from any kind of situation that doesn't feel right to you. The Cups are about our emotions. And maybe you've already been or currently are in a situation that, you know, you're kind of going back and forth. Should I stay or should I go? Um, the Knight of Pentacles is one who's looking for a new opportunity. He has come across these fertile fields. And now that your knight has made this shift, it's time for you to walk away from something that doesn't feel good to you. Next, we have the Emperor. I love it. Uh, the Emperor is ruled by Aries. And look, he's wearing his armor, though he's sitting at rest. He is ready for anything. He's already ready for battle, but he's not in battle. But he is protected. And I feel like that his armor is reflecting back any kind of negativity and it's bouncing off of his armor and not causing him any harm. Now, the emperor is also one who is, because he's ruled by Aries, is the beginning of the astral wheel. So I do feel like that this could be beginning a business, starting a business, and, uh, you know, because you've walked away from something and you actually are more powerful than others give you credit for. Next, we have the chariot. I love it. Independence. Now, with the chariot, we do have a push and pull me energy with the black and white horse. Horses represent action, freedom. But it is with your reins of wisdom 
that get the horses to cooperate and take you where you desire. To me, the chariot card is getting the car keys to the car so that it actually opens up new opportunities of freedom for you. And that is beautiful to see following the emperor because this is a card of power. And then we have the queen of swords. Okay, this is a card of separation, separating yourself from those who are casting doubt. She is the queen of discernment. You know what's right for you. And, you know, you might be able to share that with other people, but they might try to cast doubt on what it is you are trying to do. And for you, it very well could have something to do with career, your business, uh, wanting to have independence. And you are clearing that negativity out of your space. We do have a blue jay right here. I don't know if you can see it sitting right here at her shoulder. Now, the blue jay does communicate uh, messages between the world. Uh, he is, the blue jay is of sky and earth with the blue and white, with the clouds and the sky, and the black bringing groundedness and birds of course are messages and there's another one right here too so I do feel like that you are receiving messages that are bringing you positive messages for you okay let's get some clarifying cards on the bottom of the deck we do have the knight of swords now, the Knight of Swords is clearing the obstacles from your path. And I feel like that's important here with the Chariot card, clearing your path. It's also an instigator of change. And with the Queen of Swords, this is a card of separation, loss. You know, we do have the Eight of Cups here where you're walking away from that which no longer serves you. There might have been some kind of sacrifice but you are gaining your freedom. Okay, let's get some clarifying cards on this. On the Knight of Pentacles, we have the Knight of Wands. The time is right. You'll know it. The Knight of Wands is about serendipity. He's about action to where the Knight of Pentacles is very slow and methodical. On the Eight of Cups, we have the Three of Pentacles. I feel like for some of you, as this is a general reading, you might be leaving a dissatisfying job to a more satisfying career, uh, joining a group where people are cooperative with their skills and talents rather than uh, trying to take credit, creating unnecessary competition. On the Emperor, we have the Page of Cups. Your creativity, your skills, your inspiration. Your magical powers are creative energies. And the Page of Cups is uh, coming into your power, coming into that creativity. On the Chariot, we have the Eight of Wands. Ooh, you are moving quickly. You are going fast. Um, for some of you, this could be having sent out several resumes and now you are getting a return to those resumes. And for some of you, it could be a change of location uh, where you are being offered a job that fits you, fits your creativity, your uniqueness, and you're working with a team that 
welcomes you. And then on the Queen of Swords, we have the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, we have the Knight of Pentacles here with the Knight of Wands. And we have the Knight of Pentacles ending your reading on the Queen of Swords, or I should say your tarot spread, um, bringing you stability, planting that seed. That is your goal. That's what you have in mind here with the Knight of Wands. Uh, looking for the opportunity, doing what you can to make that happen, uh, making yourself available, creating the situation. Maybe you're creating a business to create the opportunity for yourself and uh, things begin to move very quickly, especially with your independence and it does reward you with stability the bottom of the deck we have seven of pentacles the time of ripening it's ready to pick pick that opportunity that feels right to you that feels like there's growth let's get you a couple cards from the witching hour oracle have the high priestess leadership beautiful beautiful especially with that evil queen you deserve sugar not salt and the magical powers with the psychic protection you are magical and you are positioning yourself to take on the role of leadership. You're creating that role for yourself with the Page of Cups and the Emperor and uh, you're, maybe you're putting messages out to the universe to bring you to the right place or just make things happen and things are going to happen. You have to make room for it here with the Eight of Cups, leaving something behind. Uh, the Queen of Swords, severing some cords, letting some people go. And then we have the Book of Spells, Learn. I love it because even though the High Priestess, it, to me, is like the librarian, she is in many ways the teacher, but a good teacher knows they're forever the spook the student and you know now you're studying up on different spells becoming inspired they could be spells for psychic protection building your magical powers getting into meditation at the bottom of the deck we have the poison throw or the poison thorn with low vibrations I feel like that speaks to that evil queen. And um, again, the rose smells sweet, but look out for the, th the thorns. Okay, let's get you a couple uh, witchling cards. I do see a lot of serendipity in your reading. You might be, because I just, with this chariot card and the eight of wands, I feel like that you're moving on at the perfect time. You have this knight of wands, which is about serendipity, being at the right place at the right time. With this Knight of Pentacles, we have the Knight of Pentacles here with the Queen of Swords. I feel like that you're severing ties at the perfect time for you to move on. Okay, let's see what we have here. Motivation. Yes, there is a lot of motivation in this reading. Motivation can kindles the passion and energy needed in working toward your goals. 
So you may have to learn, gain more knowledge, and you're motivated to do that because you're interested in what it is you're learning. Next, we have creativity. Okay, we talked about that with the Page of Cups and the Emperor creating your own business for some of you. Creativity is a natural part of you that can be ignited and developed. Some of you might be working on your own book of spells, working on your own magical rituals. And look at the bottom of the deck. We have empowerment. The determination of your mind and soul will guide you toward unleashing inner power. The High Priestess. Some of you may be studying astrology. Some of you might be un, uh, learning herbology, uh, making magical teas, making magical potions, and creating a book as you go along. And you discover that you can make that into a new business for yourself. Uh, some of you might be creating your own oracle deck with this uh, page of cups because there is a lot of creativity. But I do feel like that some of you are learning how to create your own business, uh, whether it's uh, doing astrology charts for other people, uh, doing herbal medicine, uh, creating herbal teas, magical potions, and you're writing your book on these things. And that is going to help empower you. Let's get you a card from the Practical Witch Spells. have the altar spell candle calm okay let's see if i can bring it into focus for you okay create a week of blissful and composed calm with the following spell on sunday evening anoint a purple candle with vanilla essential oil place the candle on your altar beside a vase of purple flowers. Sit in front of a window when twilight begins. Now twilight can be dawn between night and day. It can also be in the evening between day and night. And when the sun is completely gone, light the candle and chant. So apparently this is uh, the evening twilight. Okay, and then recite, I release care, stress, and worry. I am the mountain, the river, the tree, the grass, and the moon. I receive my strength from nature, and she is my center. Tomorrow and the next, all gladness will enter. Harm to none, only good. So you will do this spell in the evening, on a Sunday evening, and begin that change. And bringing yourself calm. Now the purple flowers could be lavender. They can be any purple flower that you feel drawn to. At the bottom of the deck, we have charms for love. Another charm for luck in love is to take seven tiny rose quartz stones and put them on your windowsill during the full moon for seven hours. Then pick up the stones and while holding them in the palm of your hand, speak this wish spell aloud. Luck be quick, luck be kind. And by lucky seven, good luck will be mine. Blessed be. Okay, so 
beautiful let's get you a card from secrets of the witch Bewitched. The witch now releases you from any ill wishing. She sprinkles sage beneath your pillow. Think of what you wish to release before you go to sleep. All will be well in one lunar cycle. So any ill wishing from this ill queen from this evil queen. If you do this bewitched spell. Her spell will be broken in one lunar cycle. All will be well. So the lunar cycle is usually 28 days. From new moon till full moon, that is actually two weeks long. But this says lunar cycle, so... It, we just had the full moon, so you mo most certainly can begin this spell during this waning moon phase at the time that I'm doing this reading, and do this spell until the next new moon, and then you will have a new beginning and all will be well. The bottom of the deck, we have the witch's broom. Today, the witch will sweep and clear, clear your space with her magical broomstick. She freshens up the energy at work and home, cleansing your aura and sparkling up your life. Feel your vital powers flowing. We have motivation and creativity. You're going to feel that energy flow. And you're going to start feeling more empowered. And use your broom, your magical broom, to sweep away the negativity that you might feel in your space. It might also be a good time to do a altar cleansing, you know, uh, changing out your altar for the changing of the seasons or the next moon phase. Okay, let's get two more cards for you from the Making Magic. Okay, Spirit tossed this card here out. Perseverance, the motivation to keep going despite the odds. Look at that, motivation and perseverance. Okay, just persevere. Your motivation is there. And finally, we have the star. The silver energy of the star brings good luck and serendipity. And we have the Knight of Wands here, which is the Knight of Serendipity. Recognize those opportunities. They can pass you by if you do not take action because it is your free will to take action. And you can start by taking action by learning, doing this candle calm spell, and becoming the high priestess of your own magical powers. You have this motivation. You may even have a few friends that look to you for guidance in their magical endeavors. Okay, Pile 3, I'm going to end your reading here. It went really long. You're the longest reading. So until next time, take care and blessed be my friends.